So I think we've all reaped the benefits of proper planning and preparedness, and that couldn't be more important than thinking about our first aid for our dogs. So what do you have in your first aid kit that you take with you out in the field? Wouldn't you like to know? Let's dive right into some of the things I think are super important to take with you. So the first thing I would recommend is to familiarize yourself with the contents of your first aid kit and know what you're bringing and how to use them. If there's something in there that doesn't make sense to you, just go ahead and take it out and save space and wait. Um, one of my favorite things in here and something I would never leave home without is a basic slip lead. So this weighs next to nothing. And it's absolutely critical to use to leash up a dog if you need to cross a highway or some other sort of hazard. It also really serves as a muzzle in a pinch. And I can, I can demonstrate that for you. And you can just get it around the dog's muzzle and then wrap around like this if you need to remove porcupine quills or work on another wound where the dog might be inclined to bite you if they're painful. I think a skin stapler is a really valuable tool in the right hands. I would say that in the clinic, I have seen my share of disasters where wounds were not properly cleaned before using this device. But if you've got a clean, basic wound, this can be really a time saver and kind of basically revive a hunt that might otherwise be ruined. Ruthann, what's your go-to in this setup here? It seems really basic, um, but actually having a good set of nail trimmers can oftentimes save your hunt. Uh, a broken toenail on one of our sporting dogs not only uh, can be a risk for infection, but pain for them. And if we can trim off that broken toenail, put a little quick stop on there. So this helps to stop the, the bleeding if where the quick is in their nail and boom, they can be right back out there in the field. So I, I know it sounds pretty basic, but having a good set of nail trimmers is super important. So Ruthann, I see you've got some popsicle sticks over there and some other materials. Tell us about your bandage setup over there and how you like it. Not anything super fancy, but these are just tongue depressors that actually can be used as a splint um, if they have a, a broken bone of some sort. And then we do have the cast padding here and some roll gauze that goes on the outside um, of your bandage, as well as some vet wrap, which is stretch bandage that can be applied again to help to secure if there is a either a wound that needs covering or perhaps there's some sort of dislocation, broken bone, at least can get you stable back to the car and as you seek uh, professional veterinary care. Ruth Ann, I see your kit has a nice collection of wound cleaning solutions. How would you implement these in the field? Yeah, so if there's a, uh, one of these certainly is eye flush, right? Our hunting dogs can get a lot of debris, um, things like that in their eyes. Sometimes it, it can also be debilitating for them. So getting that flushed out right away, uh, I like to say that dilution is the solution to pollution. So the same applies for our wound care. If they get a, you know, a cut or a laceration, uh, that sort of thing, getting all of that dirt out of there, all of that bacteria out of there as quickly as possible is gonna really help prevent a long-term infection. So flushing that, that wound like crazy after it occurs, again, can, can help to prolong that hunt for us. Sure, I can't tell you how many hunts have been saved in, in my world by the eye wash. And being yeah. able to get a grass seed or something out of there has really made my dogs a lot more comfortable and gets them back in the game. I wanna move on to my one of my favorite things yeah. that I would not leave home without, and that's either a multi-tool or these fancy hemostats. And I'm really specifically talking to you uh, porcupine lovers out there. So obviously you'd have your dog muzzled and yourself protected. I can't tell you how many times, maybe you've seen this, that our clients end up with worse wounds from dog bites than their dogs came in on emergency with. So I like these because they keep your hand a pretty safe distance away from the dog's mouth when their muzzle is loaded with porcupine quills. They're super lightweight. They actually weigh quite a bit less than a multi-tool. There's really only one medication that I take with me in the field, and that's just basic Benadryl or diphenhydramine. And the human dose is actually quite equivalent to what a dog needs for most occasions. And it's really hard to overdose a dog with this if you were to use too much. I keep this for stings and sometimes even snake bites. Um, or any time a dog has got a, some sort of injury that's swelling up rapidly. So Seth, this is probably a situation that we never want to have happen, but you certainly want the right equipment for first aid if it does happen. You wanna talk about those two pieces there? 
So this is a tourniquet, which I hope I never have to use in the field. It's a human model, which would work great on a dog and also on your hunting buddy if they were to get injured as well. The other device is a little bit more peculiar, and this is simply a set of heavy duty zip ties designed to free a trap if your dog were to be unfortunate enough to get caught in one of those. Again, it takes up a lot of space, but it's pretty lightweight. But if you need this, you'll be super glad that you have it. A lot of people ask me about super glue. Is that something that you carry in your field kit? Yeah, so I don't carry super glue. Uh, that I do actually, I do carry the liquid bandage though. It's very similar in properties, just a little bit more specific to skin adhesion versus just our standard super glue that's out there. Yeah, it's great for those small lacerations that don't really require a staple and can get them closed up and, and safe for the rest of the hunt. So to recap our contents here, safety first, a cheap, lightweight slip lead to serve as both a leash and a muzzle in a pinch. Then I have two items here used in a catastrophe, a tourniquet as well as two heavy duty zip ties to get your dog out of a trap. Next we have these nail clippers to use to trim up a broken nail in the field and then moving on to the skin stapler to provide temporary relief of a laceration or cut. But only after you have first thoroughly flush that Correct. wound, right? And that yes. cut, we don't want to staple that bacteria uh, in there. So certainly having good wound care flush on hand as well as eye flush can, uh, can help to save your hunt. We also have some liquid bandage. Again, after we have flushed that small wound there, liquid bandage to help to seal that. We've got a good set of bandage material, everything from roll gauze and cast padding to vet wrap and some elasticon to help keep that bandage in place as well as some tongue depressors to help to splint if there is a broken bone yep don't forget my favorite which is the lightweight hemostats you can also use a multi-tool these are great for removing porcupine quills from a dog yep and a good pair of bandage scissors and a set of tweezers going to serve you as well.